Hi there, welcome to the February 2023 solar update. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe and let's get on with it. But before we get into the stats, let's just remind ourselves of my solar panel system. Uh, so 14 Jinko 390 watt panels, uh, totaling 5.4 kilowatts, 10 on the south and four on the east and a solar edge four kilowatt inverter. So that's the solar side. On the battery side, we've got the three kilowatt AC inverter and the eight kilowatt Gen 1 Give Energy battery. And then of course, I've got a few extra bits and bobs such as the My Energy Eddy heating the hot water, the Harvey and the Hub, and the Hypervolt EV charger. So these are the um, solar stats or solar production for February per day, uh, day one to day 28 in February 2023. So overall for the month, it's been pretty good. 347.57 kilowatt hours for the month. And it's been pretty good month overall. As you can see here, um, there's kind of some spikes. I've had a few kind of moderate days and then about five really good days, a couple of bad days, three or four really good days. And it sort of carried on really um, all the way to the end of the month. The best day of the month for me was the 20th, which was 24 uh, kilowatt hours there on that day. And the worst day was the 12th, which was 1.5. Um, but it's really good to see that a lot of the days in February have been hitting around the 20 kilowatt hours. Um, we could even count these sort of 19s, 21, 20, 21, 18, 21, you know, nearly half the month um, was kind of very, very good. Although I'm quite happy to have days in the winter time of five, six, seven kilowatt hours, which is enough to run the kind of house during the day and then top up the battery as well. So I'm even happy with those days. It's those one and two kilowatt hour days that I kind of don't like. So what have we got then for the average? So 347 divided by 28 gives us an average of 12.39 kilowatt hours or 12.4 kilowatt hours per day on average. So that is pretty good for the month. So what does that mean compared to the years? Well, I've not had a February before. So here we are in February, obviously a lot higher than January. So 347 in February and last month, if you remember, was 243. So it's been a lot, lot better. And obviously December was 166 and 180 in November. Um, October was 476, but we are definitely, definitely on the way up now. Don't look at March. I said this in my last video, that was one week in March because my install was in the third week of March last year. So won't be long now, three more weeks and we should have some annual figures to share with you. Um, really interested to see if the annual overall figure matches what the um, MCS um, documentation or prediction uh, came out with as well, just to see if that matches up. And I'll be doing a video on that as well when we get to the end of March. So it surely, surely looks like um, we're going upwards. And if I was going to do a straight line curve, I'd say we're kind of looking at about, I don't know, 450 to 500 in March, hopefully, uh, but we'll have to see next month. So how did we use all of this lovely solar energy? Well, this is the Hypervolt dashboard, the EV charger. So some of it went into uh, my car during the day as it sat on the driveway. And in February, we did use quite a lot, as you can see. So 483 kilowatt hours. Uh, a lot more than a typical month, which has kind of been 326, 295, so around the 300 kilowatt hours with filling the i3 every night uh, during the week or five to six nights a week, which is a uh, 18 kilowatt hour battery in that early edition. Um, but February, we did use a bit more, mainly because my car did a couple of long trips uh, and I had to fill it up. So I ran it for four nights during the month for the full um four hours so four times seven 28 kilowatt hours per night uh, four times so that's why we've got a bit more in there but i also think there's more in here because obviously we used i filled up a lot more through solar as well which i can't break down and show you 
um, in the Hypervolt dashboard, which is a bit of a shame, really. Um, it would be nice to have more, a lot more analytics in here so you could see um, where your energy came from. Hopefully that will come in the future. So we also used some of the solar power to heat the hot water. Not a lot. As you can see up here, eight kilowatt hours for the month of February was used. Um, we're still using the boiler to heat the hot water in February while the heating's on. But sometimes um, when there was excess, I did let the eddy take up a little bit of the slack for an hour or so in the mornings and let it heat the hot water until it reached the maximum temperature uh, in the tank. So as you can see here, there's the odd little spike, but not a massive amount uh, went into the eddy, although we will be using this a lot more um, when we turn off the boiler and we only heat the water through solar, which will probably be kind of April onwards, I guess. So how much did we export in the month of February? Well, not a great deal. Um, the best day was seven kilowatt hours on the 9th of Feb. And then another six and a half, and kind of nearly seven on the 26th of Feb, with some really, really low days as well. So monthly, that added up to, for the month, 64.77 kilowatt hours were exported. Now, how does that compare to other months? Well, February was 64, as I've said, and uh, January was 29, so double uh, what January was 18 in December 25 in November and 60 in October so 60 in October compared to 64 in February it was kind of a very similar month to October uh, when it came to the export so what about electricity imported from the grid well this was a fairly kind of standard month with most of our power uh, coming from uh, cheap rate uh, octopus go overnight um, most of the every night we'd charge the battery to full capacity we've got an eight kilowatt hour battery so we'd fill that up every night and then obviously the i3 mainly has a full charge of 18 kilowatt hours every night as well uh, for nearly every day so you can see where probably some days where the i3 kind of wasn't charged uh, fully or at all and just the battery was kind of done and then these two higher values here, they are the days I spoke of earlier where I charged the uh, charged my car fully uh, for four nights. So two nights there, which gave us two thir 37 and 39 and then 36 and th another 36. So they were the four nights that were used um, the most. And if we look at the full year, then it's fairly typical uh, 632 for the month compared to 585 last month and 600 the month before that and 547 the month before that so as you can see well, that's when we first started sort of charging the i3 overnight uh, every night and turning the battery on obviously to charge up every night as well because in october we kind of didn't do that so that's why those values are a lot lot lower so now this is the kind of typical um, usage during the winter months Although I do expect this to drop uh, when we stop uh, filling the battery up overnight during the summer. It'll just be car charging overnight. So let's get into some numbers and some uh, values of what I spent during the month of February on gas and electric. So one of the first numbers that I look at every month is if it's worth me buying and investing in another battery. I have an 8 kilowatt hour battery. Uh, do I need another five or another eight or nine now as they don't make the eights anymore give energy um, and this month has been really good the uh, how I measure the shortfall is I download the data from um, Octopus and I look for any grid imports um, between 8 p.m. and 12.30 a.m. obviously 12.30 a.m. is when it goes cheap rate again and I start charging the battery so Anything I've used um, between those times, I kind of add up and the batteries never run out before 8 p.m. And during this month in February, we were short by 6.64 kilowatt hours at 40 pence. Um, and so we only paid £2.72 um, across those times during the month. So that was really 
absolutely nothing. Um, so at the moment, it certainly is not worth investing uh, in another battery at the moment unless the price drops dramatically or our, electri or our electricity use increases uh, greatly as well. So some numbers for February then, as billed by Octopus Energy. So the grid import, uh, during the day we imported 15.22 kilowatt hours at 40.13 pence. That added up to £6.11. In the night where most of our electricity use is on Octopus Go for the charging the battery in the car, uh, we used 617.26 kilowatt hours at 7.5 pence a kilowatt hour at 46.29 and we exported 64.77 uh, that was at the terrible price of 4.1 pence per kilowatt hour which equals £2.66 not amazing uh, so our electric spend in total uh, was £52.40 for the month minus the export of £2.66 gives us a total of £49.74 for the month. So that includes running the house, um, a tiny bit of hot water heating and charging the uh, EV overnight and the battery as well. So I'm just going to mention the gas usage again quickly. Um, so this was measured from the 31st of January to the 28th of February, so 29 days in total. And it came out at 2,011 kilowatt hours at the 10.31 pence rate, uh, which is the reduced rate because of the government price guarantee scheme. Uh, and that equaled 207 pounds and 33 pence for the month. If we then look at that in total and add on the standing charges, so as mentioned before, the gas was 207.33 and the electric 49.74. Uh, the gas is 26.84 pence a day times 28 days, £7.52. And the electric 37.65 pence a day times 28 days equals £10.54. So if we add the electric up of 49.74 plus the 10.54 gives us a grand total of 60 pounds and 28 pence for the month. And the gas is 207.33 plus 7.52, which equals 214.85. So add those two up and you roughly get 275 pounds for the month. So over 28 days, that kind of roughly um, works out to £9.82 a day, uh, including the standing charges. So as it's quite easy to break it down, as you can see here. Um, the electric use is only £2.15 on average per day uh, during February. So that includes, as I said, charging the car a little bit or charging it fully uh, and charging the battery as well, whereas the gas obviously takes up most of that cost so really it's uh, I don't think the electricity can get much cheaper for us really I think now it's really thinking about um, the future and uh, how we can actually decrease um, the cost of heating the house and the hot water over the winter um, in the future and how that's going to come down in price at the moment I do not know Thanks for watching. I hope you liked the video. If you did, give us a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and I'll see you soon.